Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Pytel and today we'll examine several illustrated examples of series parallel DC circuit analysis. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has survived the series parallel DC circuit analysis examples level one lecture with their sense of dignity still intact. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, by all means take the time to do so now and return to this lecture when you are so qualified. You'll recall the problems in the aforementioned series parallel DC circuit analysis examples level one lecture were total setups so easy even a snowboarder could do them. Not so in this lecture. These represent series boss level challenges that necessitate complete mastery of both series and parallel circuit properties and a little creativity and thought on your part to achieve the desired results. Take your time and struggle with these problems and don't tap out too quick. If you can solve these problems, you are tracking. If you can't solve these problems, you don't understand series parallel DC circuits as well as you think you do. Let's see how it goes. My sincere advice for every single one of these scenarios is to lay out everything you do know about series and parallel circuits and apply these fundamental properties to the circuit in question. Ideally, you should be able to use the provided clues to make deductions about or to solve for other properties. You will no doubt recall that current through elements in series is the same. This is the most fundamental series circuit property. Additionally, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that for any closed loop, the summation of voltage rises equals the summation of voltage drops. In short, what goes up must come down. Similarly, you will no doubt recall that voltage across elements of parallel is the same. This is the most fundamental parallel circuit properly. Additionally, Kirchhoff's current law states that for any node, the summation of incoming currents equals the summation of outgoing currents. In short, what goes in must come out. Finally, power in always equals power out. We can use this fact to solve for other properties or to check our work. Mastery of series parallel DC circuit analysis necessitates active participation on your part, and as such, I'm encouraging you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers do not match those illustrated, by all means, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Our first illustrated example problem features a series parallel combination of three elements. R1 a 320 ohm resistor, R2 an 800 ohm resistor, and R3 an unknown resistor. However, we do know it is experiencing a 6 volt drop. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the unknown resistance R3, and the source current. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's first use Kirchhoff's current law to analyze this circuit. Source current comes out of the source and it must travel through resistor R1. It can be said source current equals I1. Source current then splits into two paths, one going through R2, the other going through R3. It can be said source current equals I1, which equals I2 plus I3. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in red suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in orange suggests that E equals V1 plus V3. Find that Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in yellow suggests that V2 equals V3. These analyses imply that R2 and R3 are in parallel with one another. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. V2 equals V3 and they both equal 6 volts. An application of Ohm's law solving for I2 demonstrates that I2 is 7.5 milliamperes. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation solving for unknown voltage V1 demonstrates that V1 is remaining 12 volts. Another application of Ohm's law solving for I1 demonstrates that I1 is 37.5 milliamperes. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis for this circuit has demonstrated that source current equals I1 and they both equal 37.5 milliamperes. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's current law equation for this circuit solving for unknown current I3 demonstrates that I3 is the remaining 30 milliamperes. An application of Ohm's law solving for unknown resistance R3 demonstrates that R3 is 200 ohms. As a means of checking our work, we can take R2 and R3 in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, where R single prime has a value of 160 ohms. R single prime is perfectly in series with R1. The series combination of R1 and R single prime presents a total resistance of 480 ohms. Total resistance is equal to supply voltage divided by source current. This similarly yields 480 ohms. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct and we can move on to the next illustrated example. Our next illustrated example features a 20 volt source and a series parallel combination of four elements. R1 a 150 ohm resistor, R2 an unknown resistor, R3 a 360 ohm resistor, and R4 an unknown resistor. 
The only additional pieces of information we're given for this circuit is the fact that we know I2 to be 40 milliamperes and V4 to be 11 volts. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the source current, and the unknown resistors R2 and R4. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis of this series parallel circuit demonstrates that source current immediately splits into two paths. Let's call the one on the left I single prime. Let's call the one on the right I double prime. I source therefore equals I single prime plus I double prime. If we look at the I single prime path, it can be said I single prime equals I1, which equals I2. R1 and R2 are undoubtedly in a series relationship with one another. Similarly, it can be said I double prime equals I3, which equals I4. R3 and R4 are undoubtedly in series with one another. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in red suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in orange suggests that E equals V3 plus V4. Finally, a Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in yellow suggests that V2 plus V1 equals V3 plus V4. These analyses imply that R1 and R2 are in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime. And R3 and R4 are also in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R double prime. R single prime and R double prime are perfectly in parallel with one another. Let's examine the path on the left first. I2 is known to be 40 milliamperes. R1 and R2 perfectly in series with one another. Current through elements in series is the same. I2 equals I1 and they both equal 40 milliamperes. An application of Ohm's law solving for V1 demonstrates that V1 is 6 volts. An algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation solving for unknown voltage V2 demonstrates that V2 is the remaining 14 volts. Another application of Ohm's law solving for unknown resistance R2 demonstrates that R2 is 350 ohms. Let's now examine the path on the right. An algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation solving for unknown voltage V3 demonstrates that V3 is the remaining 9 volts. An application of Ohm's law solving for current I3 demonstrates that I3 is 25 milliamperes. Current through elements in series is the same. R3 and R4 are in series with one another, therefore I3 equals I4 and they both equal 25 milliamperes. Another application of Ohm's law solving for unknown resistance R4 demonstrates that R4 is 440 ohms. Using Kirchhoff's current law equation for this series parallel circuit solved for source current demonstrates that source current is I single prime plus I double prime. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates that source current is 65 milliamperes. As a means of checking our work, the series parallel circuit can be thought of as R single prime being the series combination of R1 and R2 in parallel with R double prime the series combination of R3 and R4. R1 in series with R2 demonstrates R single prime is 500 ohms. R3 in series with R4 demonstrates that R double prime is 800 ohms. The total resistance seen by the source is R single prime in parallel with R double prime. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates a total resistance of 307.7 ohms. Source current is equal to supply voltage over total resistance. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates that source current is 65 milliamperes. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct, and we can move on to the next illustrated example. Our next illustrated example features a voltage source of an unknown magnitude in a series parallel relationship with four elements. R1 is known to have a resistance of 1.2 kilo ohms, R2 is known to have a resistance of 1 kilo ohm, R3 is an unknown resistor, and R4 has a known resistance of 1.4 kilo ohms. The only additional pieces of information are single subscript notation voltages with reference to the ground connection. VB with reference to ground is known to be 52 volts. VC with reference to ground is known to be 42 volts. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the source current, unknown resistance R3, and the voltage source magnitude. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. A Kirchhoff's current law analysis of this circuit demonstrates that source current immediately splits into two paths. The path on the left I'll call I single prime and the path on the right I'll call I3. Source current therefore equals I single prime plus I3. These two current paths recombine and must travel through R4. It can be said that source current equals I4. Let's take a closer look at the I single prime path. 
I single prime must travel through R1, which must travel through R2. I1 must equal I2 because R1 and R2 are perfectly in series with one another. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loop in red suggests that E equals V1 plus V2 plus V4. In double subscript notation, this loop would be equivalent to E equals VAB plus VBC plus VC with respect to ground. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in orange suggests that E equals V3 plus V4. In double subscript notation, this would be equivalent to stating E equals VAC plus VC with respect to ground. Finally, Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this loop in yellow suggests that V2 plus V1 equals V3. These analyses imply that R1 and R2 are perfectly in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime. R single prime is perfectly in parallel with R3. Nodal voltage VC with respect to ground is equivalent to the voltage drop across to R4. V4 equals VC, therefore V4 is 42 volts. An application of Ohm's law solving for I4 demonstrates that I4 is 30 milliampers. Source current is known to be equal to I4. Source current also equals 30 milliampers. Double subscript notation VBC is equal to VB minus VC. VBC is equal to V2. 52 minus 42 equals 10 volts. V2 therefore equals 10 volts. An application of Ohm's law solving for I2 demonstrates that I2 is 10 milliampers. Current through elements in series is the same. I1 equals I2, and they both equal 10 milliampers. This is equal to our branch current I single prime. An application of Ohm's law solving for V1 demonstrates that V1 is 12 volts. This is equivalent to double subscript notation VAB. Voltage at A with respect to C is equal to VAB plus VBC, or V1 plus V2 equals V3. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates that VAC, or V3, is 22 volts. We could use Ohm's law to solve for I3, but we could also use an algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's current law equation, solving for unknown current I3, where I3 is equal to source current minus I single prime. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates that I3 is the remaining 20 milliampers. An application of Ohm's law solving for unknown resistor R3 demonstrates that R3 is 1.1 kilo ohms. Finally, an application of Kirchhoff's voltage law demonstrates that E equals V1 plus V2 plus V4. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates that our unknown voltage source is 64 volts. Similar loops such as V3 plus V4 yield similar values. As another means of checking our work, we can take R1 and R2 in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, which yields 2.2 kilo ohms. Then we can combine R single prime and R3 in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R double prime, which has a value of 733.3 ohms. Finally, we could take R double prime in series with R4, which yields a total resistance of 2,133.3 ohms. Finally, total resistance is equal to supply voltage divided by source current. Substituting our given values similarly yields 2,133.3 ohms. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct, and we can move on to the final illustrated example. Our last illustrated example features a 19.4 volt source and a series parallel combination of five elements. Unknown resistor R1, R2 1 kilo ohms, R3 640 ohms, R4 and R5 are both unknown. Additionally, instrumentation in the following locations yields the following values. M meter X indicates 20.5 milliampers of current traveling in this direction. Voltmeter Y indicates a five volt drop positive to negative left to right. Cross R4. Finally, M meter Z indicates 8 milliampers of current traveling in the indicated direction. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across each element, the current through each element, the source current, and unknown resistor R1, R4, and R5. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. All right, folks, if you did this correctly, you are tracking and you will have no problems for the rest of your life. Without instrumentation, our circuit would look something like this. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loop in red suggests that E equals V1 plus V2. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loops in orange demonstrates that E equals V1 plus V3. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loop in yellow suggests that E equals V1 plus V4 plus V5. A Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of the loops in green suggests that V2 equals V3. Finally, the Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis for the loops in purple demonstrates that V3 equals V4 plus V5. Source current must travel through R1. 
Therefore, source current equals I1. Then splits into three paths. The one on the left will call I2, the one in the middle will call I3, and the one on the right will call I single prime. Finally, if we look at the far right path I single prime, it can be said that I single prime equals I4, which equals I5. R4 and R5 are undoubtedly in series with one another. Let's take a look at M meter X. M meter X is undoubtedly reading the combination of I3 and I single prime. And M meter Z is reading I single prime, where I single prime is I4 and I5. An algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's current law equation, solving for unknown current I3, demonstrates that I3 is the missing 12.5 milliamperes. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that V3 is 8 volts. Application of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation, where V3 equals V4 plus V5, and V4 is known to be a measurement of Vy at 5 volts. An algebraic manipulation of the same equation, solving for V5, demonstrates that V5 is the remaining 3 volts. An application of Ohm's law, solving for R4, demonstrates that R4 is 625 ohms. Similarly, an application of Ohm's law, solving for R5, demonstrates that R5 is 375 ohms. We know everything to know about R3, R4, and R5, so let's move on to R2. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. V2 equals V3, and they both equal 8 volts. An application of Ohm's law solving for I2 demonstrates that I2 is 8 milliamperes. An application of Kirchhoff's current law demonstrates that source current is equal to I1, which is equal to I2 plus I3 plus I single prime. Substituting our calculated values for I2 and I3 and I single prime demonstrates that source current and I1 are 28.5 milliamperes. An algebraic manipulation of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation solving for unknown voltage V1 demonstrates that V1 is the remaining 11.4 volts. Finally, an application of Ohm's law solving for unknown resistor R1 demonstrates that R1 is 400 ohms. All right, if you got these values, you are tracking, and I feel confident in your ability to perform series parallel DC circuit analysis. All right, let's bring this lecture to a close. In conclusion, this lecture examines several illustrated examples of series parallel DC circuit analysis. Remember to review these techniques as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.